We're getting pushed as fuck. Where the hell are you? Holy shit, you guys are across the map. Help us, for fuck's what sake. What the fuck are you, sir? Ray, it's we your job to micromanage you. people at every minute. You have to micromanage. Shut the fuck up. No one you can't simply you say, anyway. hey, defend an objective <laughs> and expect people to listen to you, man. You have to micromanage every That's single minute. No you have to, to look anyway. at the map and you have to call people by name. <laughs> hey, you, guy, you guys over there, shit, do not wander across no the map because we're busy trying to defend the flag. We need everybody to be on the flag. Okay? As your as a squad leader, it's your job to do that. No one cares about what you say. No one fucking cares. No one listens to you. Now shut the fuck up. Okay, now can you tell him to come back and defend the flag? I killed two guys there. Or can you do me the favor of coming back, please? And uh, no, you have your uh, well, yeah. I am having a vacation. Yes. For those of you new to this channel, that was just me and Ray engaging in everyday conversation. This tutorial will not be me reading from an army manual or anything of the sort. Everything is from my experience squad leading since the old days of Project Reality. I'm not the best squad leader, but I believe I have enough experience to share some of what I've learned over the years. Before you start squad leading, Make sure you got at least a few hours in the game as a grunt and you are used to the game's mechanics. This is not a beginner's tutorial, this is a squad leader's tutorial. Alright, let's get to it. A squad leader's job is to manage a group of people in order to accomplish an objective. Remember that accomplish an objective part that is very important. First thing you're going to want to do is to name your squad accordingly. If you're going to do, for example, a mortar squad, you want to call it three men mortar. If you're going to do logistics or an armored squad, same drill. If you want to do an infantry squad, um, anything will do really. If you want people to join your squad, I find that the more effective names are English only, English teamwork, Name your squad something along those lines and you always have people in your squad. If this is your first time squad leading, I recommend that you first make a squad, let a few people join and then lock it at four or five people. Get comfortable first leading a small group and then as you are more experienced, you can unlock it and you can go up from there. Leading a squad of eight people right off the bat can be a very daunting task, I definitely do not recommend this. Just keep in mind that some servers for whatever reason do not allow locked squads, make sure you ask before you lock a squad or you may find yourself kicked from that server. So you've made your first squad, now you're gonna want to choose an officer kit. Most of the options available to a squad leader will not be available to you unless you have an officer kit. More on that in a minute. Now, depending on the faction and the amount of players in your squad, you might have different available variants of that officer kit. For example, the American team and the Russians, after six players, get scoped variants of their default rifles. Now you need to make sure that your guys have the proper kit selected. If you have a full squad, it's imperative that you have two medics. Very, very important. Always keep an eye on that. For the remaining kits, you will have to adjust depending on your faction and depending on what you're fighting against. For example, if you are on the American side fighting the insurgents, maybe you can get away without having any heavy anti-tank. But the same cannot be said if you are on the insurgents fighting the American team. This is something that is very situational and you will learn which kits are going to be best in every situation with more experienced squad leading. 
logistics. The bases for your team are called fobs. These can only be placed if you have the scroller kit. Always comes back to that. There's no other friendly fob within 400 meters. And you have at least two other team members next to you. They don't need to be in your squad. After placing a fob in almost every situation, you're going to want to build a hub. A hub is a spawn point for your team. And to build this, you require construction points. Depending on your faction, a hub has a different cost to build, which can be supplied using logistics trucks. Each truck can carry a maximum amount of supplies, which can either be CPs or ammo. Depending on the faction, some lodges can carry more supplies than others. You can identify a logistics truck from a transport truck by looking at your map and if you see an ammo icon on the back of the truck then that is a logistics truck yeah we're gonna move in a second get to me let me make a rally all right everybody spread out left and right move towards the cap let's go rally points these are spawns for your squad only and have limited uses after 9 respawns, or if an enemy walks 20 meters or closer to it, it will disappear. A rally point can be made with another squad member nearby, if the squad leader has the officer kit. If you try to place the rally point and an enemy is within 50 meters or closer, this will reset the timer of your rally. A rally point can also be made without the squad leader kit, however, instead of just requiring one person, you're going to need three other squad members near you to place down an RP. Having a rally up is probably the most important aspect of squad leading. Even if you are completely garbage as a squad leader, you don't know what the hell is going on. If you can keep a rally close to your objective or the enemy's objective, you can't be doing too bad. Do not engage, we need to get on the cap zone. Claiming vehicles for your squad. Every two members in your squad, including yourself, gives your squad a new vehicle claim, up to four vehicle claims in total. Each claim lasts eight minutes until it resets, unless you park the vehicle on your main base or FOB. To claim a vehicle, all you have to do is to enter it. If, however, a squad member requests a vehicle and you're not present, you can approve the request with page up or you can deny with page down. You can also alternatively approve the request using your map. Okay, if that sounds a little bit confusing, in sum, one claim for every two squad members. Each claim resets after 8 minutes by parking the vehicle at the friendly fob or at your main base. Why are we all here? So you've created your squad, you've designated roles, but none of the other squad leaders are communicating. What can you do? One thing that never fails is to grab your logi and make a fob either inside the middle flag or immediately outside. If you decide to make it inside the flag, make sure it's inside the capture zone, because as soon as somebody spawns, they'll already be contributing to the capture of that area. After you have your fob and hab up and running, next thing you want to do is to make a rally close enough to the fob that you can defend it, but not too close in a way that might get flanked and destroyed. You also need to keep in mind where to place it. In this case, we know the enemy is going to be coming from the south, so you want to avoid placing it close to the enemy's advancing location, and instead you want to place it on the rear of your fob, preferably in the direction of your main base. If an enemy comes in from one of the flanks and goes straight towards my fob, I will still have my rally and I can use that to spawn my squad and reinforce that fob, preferably before it goes down. In this example here, we're on the American side and we need to attack a position held by the insurgents. If your enemy is expecting you to come from one direction, in this case from the south, the best thing you can do is to flank. However, when you are flanking, you need to keep in mind if your defense is going to hold 
long enough for you to do your whole flanking maneuver. Because I've seen people do this. And by the time they get into position, the enemy already moved on, overwhelmed our defenses, and now you have a whole squad out of position. What you want to do before any assault is to set down a rally point. Find a good position like a bush or these wheat fields that make it really, really difficult to spot your rally from a distance. If you believe the enemy is not watching your approach, a direct assault will be my first try. If that fails, try one of the flanks. If that fails, you can try the wider flank that I explained before, but at the same time, you need to keep in communication with these guys over here, making sure they do not get overrun before you reach the enemy position. If everything else fails, this is going to turn into a battle of numbers. You're going to have to make a fob, making sure all people on defense that are not being required can spawn on that fob and help you on the attack. At this point in time, the only thing that should be your concern is the enemy fob. Don't worry about the cap, worry about the enemy fob. That's what you want to take down before anything else. Now, one of the issues that I have constantly with my squads is I tell them to defend in a position, and then we start taking contact from one side, and what's going to happen is all of these people that are perfectly positioned watching 360 are going to be like, hey, I want in some of that fun. So they're going to leave their, their position, and they're going to move all towards the same direction, leaving either the flank completely exposed, or the fob completely uh, unprotected in case you have a fob over here. And then the enemy will just swoop in from your flank and you're dead. This has happened more times than I can count. What can you do in this situation? You can start kicking people's ass. Or you can do what I usually do, which is to stay on the back on a high place. Binoculars looking at every direction. And in case we start getting flanked and I see enemy contact, I have enough time to tell my dudes to pull back and defend. What you can also do is to split your squad, have uh, half or one third of your squad defend and have the other half attack and maybe take down the enemy rally or the enemy fob instead of just being defensive and holding your ground at all times. This can also work, but again, it's very situational. You need to be careful not to overstretch your guys because if you do not have enough people to defend and you get flanked, result is going to be the same as the last one. You're going to lose your fob, you're going to lose your cap. Now you're a really good squad leader, you know the game, front and back, but somehow people don't listen to you. What can you do? The first and the most important aspect is your voice. If everything you say sounds like a suggestion, people are less likely to listen to you. Your tone of voice must also convey the urgency of the situation. If you are in the firefight and you need a medic or someone else to get a rally up, otherwise you're gonna get wiped, don't be like, hey man, if it's not too much of an inconvenience, and really, if you feel like it and you have the time, could you move to my position so we could set up a rally point? I actually have the opposite problem, where I find myself borderline yelling at my squads to move or to push or to do something, and I'm sure a lot of people left my squad because of that. Point is, you want to find a balance. Get your ass in a fight, soldier! Get out there and shoot some Russians! Another way to get people to listen is when you designate tasks, 
try to mention people by their names. This is not always possible if you are in a rush or they are inside a vehicle and you can't see their names. But calling them by name, in my experience, makes them a lot more likely to listen to you. Are they just shooting and they're completely deaf? What's going on? Yeah, it's possible. Bacon, Sanctuary, SQTR Tiger, last warning. Yeah. I yeah, hate babysitting people. Please get inside the truck or leave the squad. Ah, sorry. Didn't realize you were here. Holy fuck. Do me a favor. Lower your effects, uh, audio, and boost your squad radio. Cause One issue I have is that people that know me too well tend not to listen as often. If anyone has a solution for that, please let me know in the comments. Always inform other squad leaders of your intent, but make sure not to saturate the command channel. Things like, we're attacking, we're defending, there's an enemy BTR over here, enemy BTR destroyed, there's a major flank of enemies from this side or that side, there's uh, guys camping this hab, this is all important information. Please do not tell me bedtime stories over command channel. Let me give you an example of what not to do. Squad 2, be advised, we're going to be pulling up right oh. behind... Oh, shit, Nano, that's you. Uh, we're going to be pulling up right behind you. We're going to set up a fob between you and train tunnel. If you guys want to wait, we can actually set it up east of you over by those... I mean, to the west of you over by those rocks. And uh, I'll put the half down a little bit north of that so we can uh, come up come up to the north, right? uh, west of them and give the good uh, democracy hammer that way. So stand by for that. Sneaky beaky. Don't squad lead without a microphone. It cannot be done. You will not be able to communicate with your squads. You will not be able to communicate with other squads. If a player that just bought the game joins your squad, he'll have a really bad first impression of squads. Please, if you do not have a microphone, do not squad lead. Avoid abandoning combat vehicles at all costs. Even if they are flipped, there will always be someone else with a vehicle nearby to help straighten you out. Abandoning vehicles is a sure way for your team to lose a close match. Don't make a squad, wait for someone else to join and then pass the lead to someone else. This is the single biggest cause of the loss of any match for your team. If you just grab the grenade, you threw into 10 friendlies and they all died by that grenade, you will do less damage to your team than simply making a squad and passing the ball. If you do this, I'm gonna find where you live, I'm going to give you the cutest puppy you've ever seen in your life, you will cherish it and care for it, and as soon as you fall in love with that puppy, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna grab it by the neck, and then with an axe, I'm gonna <laughs> Then I'm going to use it <laughs> paint the wall, and you'll feel sorry that you ever made a squad and you passed the lead on to someone else. Whoa, contact. I think. Yeah, so. Learn to say no to your squad. Sometimes it's better to have your squad walk an extra 30 seconds than having to spawn all the way back on the fob across the map because you made a rally too close to the enemy and then it got taken down. Also from my experience, the time people wait for the medic is directly proportional to the distance to the rally point. Small specialized squads like mortars, logistics, armored or sometimes even scout groups are viable, don't be afraid to experiment with your squad. If you find yourself in the squad leader position and you do not have an officer kit, you can ask someone else to shoot you after you made a rally and then you can spawn on that rally with your proper kit. People tend to leave the game without saying anything, which makes your job a little bit more difficult. You have to keep an eye on your squad, making sure you have the proper amount of medics 
and fire support kits in use. Like I mentioned before, start small with only 3 or 4 other people in your squads and if possible have a veteran walk you through squad leading a few rounds so you can get really comfortable and if you do any mistakes he'll be there to give you a hand and advice. If at any time you have any questions during a game, don't be afraid to press G, ask questions, most squad leaders are very friendly and will help you out. A very good way to learn at the beginning is to join an experienced squad leader, take notes of what he does, and then try to iterate on that. Phobes win matches. People don't like to admit this, but many rounds, tactics go right out of the window and the team with the most people inside the flag is the one that wins. If you see that no one else takes the logi, do it yourself, get a fob up, your team will thank you. Placing contact markers on the map, especially if you find an enemy fob, is very important. However, if you want your squad to aim at something, you are better off using the squad command markers. You can do this via the map or the way I personally prefer, by looking at something, holding down T and putting down a marker. These are superior because now your squad can easily use your compass to orient themselves directly at what you so smart. It also gives you an estimated distance to your target, just don't use these for any more calculations. Have all their backs turned, they're facing... To conclude, squad leading is a very stressful job and you'll find that many times things happen that are completely out of your control uh, somebody flipped the BTR and everything went to shit from there and now you have to walk across the map and you made all the right decisions as a squad leader but you're still getting the shaft. This has happened to me more times than I can remember. But if you squad lead long enough, there'll be a round where all the planets align and you'll have an absolute blast with your squad. They will make all those 20 previous matches that were complete shit Worth it in the end. Thanks, man. Don't want you dying first. I don't want to get made. Who's who's okay, that standing around the north side? I don't want anybody peeking over the ridge. This is Ra Rainbow Six fucking Spec Ops Seal Green, what Green Beret Operation. Spitzlas. A squad team does money in uh, cash in this building oh, in front of you. Good copy. Alright, nice and easy, Check nice out. and easy. Hold fire, return to fire only. Enemies coming out of building. So, no, that's one I got two guys in the open. Hold fire, hold fire. Three guys in the open. Roger. It's four guys, four guys. Shh. No, no. I understand, there's enemies. Zero. Follow me. Cash is on the marker position. With me, with me. Okay, stop. Nice and easy. Let's focus. Okay, there's fucking dudes here. Okay, go loud, go loud. One guy on the mortar, uh, drop him. On the roof, drop them all, drop them all. East on the roof, watch out. Two guys on the hub right now. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Dig it. Dig this motherfucker right now. Go, 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 go. Minky, Minky, come on, come on, come on. It's all you. It's all you. Just dig, 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 dig. Cover me. Watch the rear, watch the rear. Somebody watch the rear. Okay, stop digging. Get your rifle. Get your rifle. Did anyone see the cash? Did anyone see the cash? Yeah, 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 here, 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 follow me, follow me, follow me. Over there, in the corner. I see it. Is it Kaya? Cover me, cover me. Brain, uh, I don't know if it's like me. Oh, 
Holy shit. I, I got it, I got it. It's burning, it's burning. One fucker on the roof. Got him, let's get out of here. Oh, ho, ho. GG. GG. Fucking see that shit. Told you. you guys fucking see that shit. GG. Depot. Depot. We are going to the petrol station recently. Depot. 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 <laughs> to so bots. You guys go for the D and we'll go for the S. We're going for the D. Me and Ray, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Hoorah for the D, lads. For, for the S for the D. Anything for a big D. <laughs> oh, 